In this video, I'm going to continue talking a more about as far as let's get started in Dreamweaver and start actually adding content to one of our pages that we created. Feel free to reference my previous videos on my YouTube channel where I talk about setting up site definition. I'm going to continue building on what I created in that page. So in the last video regarding site definitions, we made an index.html page. We saved it to our website folder that we had made a site definition of. Now, before we dive in and start working any further here, a couple of things I'd like to point out is the first thing is you want to make sure you're working in design view. Again, these videos are meant for designers, not coders. Now, if you have experience in both, that's fantastic. If you, you're more than welcome, if you want to snap over to the split view, I'm going to take the approach though, for this first kind of t walking folks through showing them what Dreamweaver is capable of, we're going to stick the design view. The other item that you will want to have available to you is if you do not under windows, under the windows drop down menu, make sure that you've brought up properties so that you get that property window. In my case, I snapped it and hooked it down at the bottom here. So let's get started with some of the basics here. So in Dreamweaver, under the properties area here, there is an item called document title called my first web page. This is something that is set as far as this is what you see on the tabs when you open a window open an internet page in a web browser. Normally, yes, we want this to be descriptive. So for instance, at any point in time, if I change my mind on this, what I can say is, you know, all about cats. Now here comes the other side of things is I want to preview this. I want to see what change was actually made. And that comes down, I'll give folks a second here, but down in this lower left-hand corner, it's really hard to see. And I feel bad that I have to keep using the magnifier here. But right here, there's a preview button that if you click on it, move my magnifier, it'll go through and recognize all types of browsers that you have installed. Now by default, it's set to Internet Explorer. However, I'm going to click on Google Chrome. Dreamweaver is going to ask me to save. I'll say yes. Let me zoom out. And if you look all the way at the top here where it opened up my web page, you can see that it says all about cats. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of this. And that's where that property control is. So when somebody says that they want you to set a document title, that's one way to do it. The other way, just so folks are aware, you can actually do this right when you make a file new document. You can also set the document title right at the start of creating the web page. I'm going to cancel out of this though. So let's talk a little bit about adding content into our website. So I've decided that I want to insert numerous items as far as typing and walking through things. So maybe I put my cursor and I say, welcome to my website about cats. Now, just starting out here, I'd like folks to pay attention. Remember we came over to files here as far as setting up the site definition. There's also an insert option for working with the different elements here that are HTML based. Don't worry about any of these lower ones, but we can get a lot done setting up, you know, lists and things like that. So let me zoom out a second. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to insert a header. Heading tags, think of them in, for instance, Microsoft Word, kind of the headings before paragraph areas, like the topic organizers. So I can just click after my cats, after my website here, 
And now I have a header talking about cats. I can also click through these just as a note for you. Each one is the largest. Each six is actually the smallest. Each three is actually the standard as far as being the same size as the general typeface that you're using with this layout. I want this to really stand out though, so I'm gonna go ahead and click back on that drop down arrow and I'm gonna change this back to each one. Okay, so I click enter. And I'm gonna say, cats are really neat because, and hit enter. By default, what this is actually doing is it is using what is called the paragraph tag. And yes, it is just that. It generates paragraphs for you. What it also does is it creates a break at the end, similar to if you were writing a paper, where you have that space between each new paragraph. Now, I wanna give a list of why I think cats are really neat. So maybe I say, I want to make some list items here. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm not really ordering the elements, which would be one, two, three, four, five. I just want to share that, hey, um, these are some neat things. So I'm going to go ahead and click on unordered list. And notice it makes that bullet point for me. Uh, and I'll say they get the zoomies. and like to play hide and seek. Give lots of I think it's head butts. And then when you're done, you just have to hit enter or return twice. And just like in Word, it's going to end your uh, grouping there. Now, maybe I want to have a second portion. I want to talk about the history of cats. So all about whoops, the history of cats. Once again, I want to make a divider here. So I say to myself, you know what? Let's do an H2 instead. I don't want it to be as large as the first element there. Now, this is where I wanted to introduce students to what is called Norm Ibsen. For those of you who have been in design for a long time, you're probably very familiar with Norm Ibsen, where it is kind of a generation-esque type really isn't say anything. It may look Latinish, but it's not actually Latin. And I do have the website here. This is probably my favorite generator. And you can generate Lorem Ibsen and I'm going to say generate one paragraph for me. So there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to do a control C or Apple C to copy. And let's go ahead and paste this in here. Now, one thing I want to do is I just want to highlight this. And I just want to make sure here. So this has been put into a paragraph tag. So we should be good to go on that. But one thing I want to point out to all of you is notice how it looks. Why do we use Lorem Ipsen in design? A couple of reasons. Number one, uh, it's much better than just writing blah, 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 repeatedly, which I've gotten in the past. Uh, number two, it gives us the feel of what a content area would look like with actual text in it without having the content text. Also two, it is it plays an important role because it will give us the feel of the overall design and what it will look like. But really, by human nature, we want to read what we see. And that can actually, from a designer's standpoint, that can be a problem because then people are reading the content instead of actually looking at our designs. So I always like to point out Lorem Ibsen to my students 
Uh, I've used this in uh, magazine layouts. I've used this on poster ads. Uh, really just, you know, I put the website for uh, my classes. Uh, you have it available to you. Or you can just Google, you know, Lorem Ibsen generator. It, this is a huge benefit from a design standpoint. So, and then finally, let's go ahead and add one more section. Uh, let's maybe call it important considerations when caring for a cat. And again, I'm going to make that a heading two. But now this time, I want to give a bit of a list here of the important things here. So. I'm going to zoom in for a second here just so you can see it. I used an unordered list previously that just was for bulleted lists. However, I want to actually order this time the importance of each of the items for caring for a cat. So I'm going to zoom back out so we can see here. Okay, so my cursor is placed in the correct position. We're going to go to ordered list. And we're going to say yearly vet visits seems pretty important. Keeping a clean litter box. Feeding your kitty twice a day at least. Playing with your cat for 15 minutes a day. Now, just like its counterpart, the unordered list, I hit twice, all good to go. So there you have kind of a basic layout as far as working and laying out a web page. So now let's go ahead and save our work and let's actually see what this looks like in a web browser. So if I go ahead back down to that preview and let's go ahead and take a look at Google Chrome. And congratulations. Really, this may not seem like a lot, and I'm going to actually pull this so you can see the scaling here. This may not seem like you did a lot, but this is actually a lot. Uh, you know, especially for those who have never made a web site before, congratulations. You've made your first web page. Now, last thing I'd like to show in this video, though, is so what exactly did Dreamweaver do for us? What did it help out with? Well, let's go ahead here. If you really want to take a peek under uh, the hood here, you can go to code. And you can see here all of the extra stuff that Dreamweaver did for you as far as the code side is concerned that you didn't even have to deal with. So now at this point, I'll go ahead and do one more. Oop, I've already saved, so we are good to go here. I'm going to navigate back to file. You can see that it is set to my index page. I'm previewing it both here as far as the web browser. Dreamweaver finally also does offer what is called the live view. We were in design, which allows us to do a layout. But if I do a live view here, it will actually show you from a measurement standpoint and what it, it does its best to try to un, give you a guesstimation of what you would actually see on a web page. Just as a side note, in a lot of the videos you're going to see from me, we didn't have this live view whenever I was learning Dreamweaver and working in it. Also, because of the coder element in me, nine times out of 10, you're going to see me just previewing in the literal browser that I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to snap to the web browser and change here. Another reason that I'll often do that is let's say, uh, uh, oh, let's change up here. Like instead of welcome to my website about cats, welcome to, maybe we change it to welcome to the most important website about cats. And there needs to be two exclamation points at the end of that. I go ahead and save. And notice what happens here. Immediately, the web browser updates. When we get into images uh, in future videos, I'm going to be talking a little bit more in depth about the differentiations between web browsers and why for so long we have tested in multiple browsers. At this point, don't even worry about that. So here you have a really basic website 
just starting out, there's so much more to learn as far as from the design side of things, but just getting those core pieces. Remember, your HTML is kind of the skeleton that helps the website stand up. Now we can start easing our way into CSS and layout where that starts to add the finesse kind of, you know, think of it almost like dyeing your hair or, you know, what type, how many piercings, um, what type of t-shirt are you wearing, uh, what type of uh, shoes are you wearing, etc. So hopefully this was helpful. I'd encourage folks that if you want to keep practicing with this insert panel, make another web page. You know, play around with uh, the paragraph tag, play around with the heading, make a table. A table looks just like it would whenever you're working inside of um, Microsoft Office. So hopefully this has helped getting you started working with making a basic website in Dreamweaver.